Hello and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show whose business was like a storybook. Perfect. Until we reach chapter 11. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Legendary Noir, the latest expansion from Upper Deck. Legendary Noir is the latest expansion to Marvel Legendary from those kooky, kooky folks at Upper Deck. Now, this, of course, like so many of the other expansions we've seen, and indeed like so many of the Marvel comic books, this game, this expansion, takes place in kind of an alternate universe. You've got kind of a gritty crime uh, film noir kind of uh, aspect here. You've got uh, heroes looking very differently. Spider-Man wears a trench coat. He carries a gun. You've got the steampunk Iron Man. All sorts of kooky things are going on here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and tell you exactly what this new uh, expansion brings to your legendary game. Now, there are two new keywords in this game that kind of bring some new rules to it, that kind of shake it up a little bit. The first uh, keyword here is investigate. Now, if you get an investigate ability, what's going to happen here is, all things being equal, you're going to draw two cards from the top of your deck and search for whatever they're looking for. It could be, you know, investigate for cards that are, um, you know cost three or more, or investigate for cards that have a certain hero class, or etc, etc. So you're going to search for those. You can take one of those if you've found it. The other you can place at the top or the bottom of the deck in any order. Or the, the two that you've investigated, you can put at the top or the bottom of the deck in any order if you can't take one of them. Um, but it may not just be your deck. You may say, you know, investigate the villain's deck, or investigate the hero's deck, or investigate other players' decks. So that's how investigate works in the game. Essentially draw those two cards. You can Take one, if it meets the criteria, you can put the other at the bottom of the deck. Or on the top of the deck. Or combinations thereof. Now, the other keyword in this game is hidden witnesses. Now, hidden witnesses are essentially bystanders, but they're turned upside down. And they're oftentimes put behind villains, and sometimes even heroes. Now, hidden witnesses are essentially kind of these people that are protecting the villain. So if they come out and they're behind a villain, you cannot... Take down that villain until you get rid of the hidden, hidden witnesses. How you do that is you have to spend recruit. You spend two recruit to take out a hidden witness, and once all the hidden witnesses are gone, you can then target and take out that uh, villain. Now, same thing, if uh, the heroes get a hidden witness, you have to pay to, uh, to recruit to get rid of them before you can buy that uh, hero with your, your remaining recruit. So that, those are like the two big keyword rules changes for this set, but they come up a lot in this set. Now, you've got four new schemes in this game, each with their own unique, interesting way to play your Marvel Legendary game. First scheme is Hidden Heart of Darkness. Now, how Hidden Heart of Darkness works is you have eight twists, and you essentially shuffle the Mastermind uh, tactics cards. The Mastermind tactics cards are not underneath the Mastermind. They're shuffled into the villain deck and become villains for that game. Now, if there are no tactics in the city, if there are no tactics cards, you can just take out the mastermind. If you've got enough, uh, uh, you know, currency to take out the, the got enough uh, kill ability, attack ability to take out the mastermind, you can do that. Just very simply, without having to worry about anything else. But again, there can't be any tactics cards in the city when you do it. Not as easy as you might think. Some of those uh, with a twist, some of those tactic cards are going to get uh, taken out of players' victory piles and put back into the villain decks, and that's pretty hard, but that's also going to let you do an investigation there. But evil wins when two tactics cards escape. So essentially you have Capture the Hidden Witnesses. This is if, if too many Hidden Witnesses, I think six Hidden Witnesses, uh, make it to the escape pile, you lose. The, the twists when they come out add Hidden Witnesses to the, uh, to, the, to the villain deck, so that one's a pretty can be a pretty hairy one to play as well. You have the Five Families of Crime, which kind of lets you um, uh, kind of treat like a, you know, the organized crime you're playing against and if you get too many of the villains actually escape from the board then of course you lose uh twists make you play two cards to push them along faster there's the find the split personality killer where you essentially create kind of a suspect deck and you kind of investigate that and as the game goes on there's more cards in there and then at the end of the game you each kind of write down who you think the the, the killer is and then you go through and who, who's ever hero card comes up the most they were the killer and whoever guesses right they win the game has two masterminds you get charles xavier professor of crime he's evil now and he's got some pretty kooky things going on of course he always leads the x-men noir and uh his master strike is he puts four hidden witnesses into the HQ on heroes. So you essentially have to pay two more for any hero you want to recruit that has a hidden witness on it. He also costs eight to defeat, but he's plus one for every bystander, including hidden, hidden witnesses, in the HQ or in the city. So the more of those bystanders' hidden witnesses come out, the more powerful he becomes. 
You've also got the Goblin. Uh, he's he deals a lot with hidden witnesses. Again, his master strike is if if uh, that comes out, you've got to take two of your uh, bystanders from the the um, your victory deck. You got to put them uh, in there as hidden witnesses. If you don't, you gain a wound. Now, of course, for the bad guys, you have the uh, X Men uh, Noir, which are kind of the evil X Men in this universe as well. You also have the Goblin's Freak Show, and Goblin's Freak Show is, of course, these these really kooky evil people um there's one of them craven who's interesting his his uh uh health his uh, attack what you have to take him down with is equal to the highest uh, cost card in the hq which is pretty interesting now again as far as heroes goes you have um 14 cards each for five different heroes you've got of course spider-man noir you've got iron man noir you've got luke cage noir you've got daredevil noir and angel noir noir means black in french in case you didn't know and what's going to happen is, of course, they each are bringing their own kind of unique uh, and interesting things to this game. Spider-Man's unique card is, of course, an investigate uh, card. With another Spider-Man card, each player's deck he can investigate. For a card that costs two or less, he can play a copy of that card and then put that card into their discard pile. So he can, again, get cards from other people or copy that card and play that card as though it were his own. Iron Man's kind of powerful card is the Adventurer's Assemble card. Now... This card reads, whenever you investigate this turn, look at uh, three cards instead of two. You choose a recruit or an attack. You investigate a, for a card with that icon. Now, on top of that, it's already got four strengths, so it's a pretty powerful card as it is. Angel's Missing Person Case uh, is, of course, it's got three attack. It allows you to investigate the hero deck for any card and put that card in your hand. That one is incredibly powerful. Daredevil's Hitting Rock Bottom gives you 3+. plus. It reads, discard a card from the top or bottom of your deck. If it costs 0, you get plus 1 attack and repeat this process. If your deck runs out, stop. So again, you can just keep building and building and building, potentially, with your, uh, with your uh, deck there with this Daredevil card. You've got Weight of the World Luke Cage Noir card. It's got a 5 plus attack uh, on it, and you get a plus 2 attack for each other card that you play this turn that costs 4 or more. Again, you're seeing these cards and these combinations that can come up that can make some really, really powerful and effective hands in order to take down the, uh, the villains. So that is just an overview of some of the cards in this game. And, of course, the twist. You have different victory conditions, um, which is one of the things we, we know and we love from the Marvel Legendary deck game is is the fact that there's so many different games in this game. And with the expansions, there's so many different schemes in this game, and it just it snowballs. I'm a huge fan of, of Marvel Legendary. As you know, I, I it's my deck builder of choice. I really, really enjoy it quite a bit. Um so this is another small box expansion, and I've played all of the expansions, and they're all, I've yet to play an expansion I didn't like. Some I like more than others, some I really like. Uh, this one I like a lot. I don't, I don't know that it's my favorite. I've got others that I probably put ahead of this one, um, but I do like it. I think it's really fun. It's really interesting. I love the artwork. I love the concept of like the, the gum shoes and the, the detectives, and there's, there's very much a, a theme here that comes through. Uh, not just the Marvel theme, but this Marvel, literally, noir theme. This this kind of detective theme. Yeah, and I, I really like that and appreciated that, and it's it's very palpable. And I, I think that's cool that they're able to, within the larger theme of, of the Marvel superheroes, able to create these kind of smaller and more intimate, but still very, very engaging themes. And I, I really like that. Uh, Investigate's pretty cool because it can be used in so many ways, and it's just, it's another new concept that again just blows my mind that well why why wow why didn't they think it's something like this before and they're always coming up with new and interesting things like that the hidden witnesses are are, are good man they're tough with with charles xavier because when those hidden witnesses come out and bystanders come out he just gets more powerful and powerful and you know you, you combine that with with the with the um with a scheme uh, where, uh, of course, you know you're, you're trying to uh, the, the tactics come out as villains. It, it's very, uh, it, it's a tough scenario, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun, um, and and all the schemes are, are fun. I, I there's one or two of them I haven't played yet, but I I really enjoyed the the schemes that I played. Uh, this is 
just a tremendously fun game. Uh, Legendary, I love, I love. Mar Marvel uh, Legendary Noir is another winner from the Legendary family of games. So undoubtedly, if you like Legendary, uh, buy it. Um, if you're not, if you're not a completist, uh, maybe there's some you, you might want to get before this one. But keep your eye on this one because it is a lot of fun and it brings some really cool stuff to your game. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us once again on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube by Board Game Geek on our Facebook page or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer. Hey, there's, there's someone behind you. No, right now. There's... Oh, my gosh. You better... You better stop him. Turn around. Turn around. He's coming for... Please somebody help me on my feet again. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show whose business was like a storybook. It was perfect until we reached... Yeah, perfect until we reached... Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to... Legendary Noir, the latest expansion from Upper Deck. Shit, from.